What did you think would happen to them? If they were to continue stumbling. And where would they end up? In hell. Before Andrea Yates became the woman who drowned her kids, she had mental challenges throughout her life. When she was a teenager, she would have dark thoughts and very crazy phases. As she got older, medical professionals diagnosed her with depression and delusional thinking. Despite these difficulties, she had a stable life with her husband, Russell, as she was very simple and religious. However, by 2001, Andrea was firmly convinced that she and her children were destined for hell. Now driven by the biblical teachings of a family friend, her psychosis led her to a chilling conclusion. She became convinced that the only way to save her children from eternal damnation and prevent Satan's return to earth was by taking their lives and bracing herself for the consequences of execution for what she would do. Andrea met Russell Yates while working as a registered nurse in 1989. 25 years old and religious, they moved in together shortly after and got married on April 17, 1993. They vowed to have as many children as possible and just after 7 years, they had 4 boys and 1 girl, each named after a biblical figure. Noah, born in 1994, followed by John, Paul, Luke and Mary, who was born in 2000, where it all started to go downhill for the Yates. By 1997, the Yates family didn't have much. They lived in close quarters managing a camper van purchased from one Warinieki who was a family friend to the Yates. For some reason, Andrea began homeschooling her children in the 38-foot mobile home. However, she was also experiencing increasingly severe bouts of postpartum depression. In 1999, with the birth of Luke, she was prescribed medication for treatment. Then on June 17th of that same year, Andrea Yates intentionally overdosed on the medication, which left her in a coma for 10 days. On July 20th, after she was released from the hospital, Russell found her in a distressed state with a knife to her throat, pleading to end her life. Andrea was so convinced to end her kid's life as she had heard Warineki preach that women were inherently flawed and that mothers would see their children face consequences. Under subsequent observation, Dr. Eileen Starbrand said she found Yates among the five sickest patients she ever had and she prescribed medication which appeared to improve Yates' condition. Andrea actually seemed to improve. She was engaging in activities again and resumed a stable homeschooling schedule. Because of her condition, mental health professionals urged Andrea Yates not to have any more kids, at least for the moment, but the family disregarded that advice. Andrea gave birth to Mary on November 30, 2000. By then, the family had bought a modest house in Clear Lake, Texas. In March 2001, Andrea started reading the scriptures following her father's death. But she also began hurting herself with sharp objects and refused to attend to her daughter who needed nurturing. She was hospitalized several times during this period, but her stay in the hospital only made things get worse as she was always being evaluated psychologically. And on June 3, 2001, Andrea stopped taking medications that suppressed her postpartum depression. Now three weeks have passed. On June 20, 2001, Russell Yates kissed his wife goodbye and left for work around 8.30 a.m. Russell, quite aware that he couldn't leave the kids with their mom alone due to her condition, made plans for his mom to come take over parenting duties from Andrea an hour later. But tragically, Russell's mom was not able to make it there on time. After saying goodbye to Russell, Andrea Yates prepared cereal for her four eldest boys. As they were eating, she took six-month-old Mary to the bathtub, which she had filled with water and drowned her, leaving her in the tub. Then she returned to the kitchen and beginning with the next youngest, drowned the rest in order of age and laid them down. Noah, the eldest, 
tried to run away when he saw his lifeless sister, but Andrea caught him too. It must have been so terrifying for Noah, as the only person he trusted would never bring harm his way took his life away from him. After drowning Noah in the tub and placing the young guest on the bed, Yates called for help. Then she called Russell and told him to come home. Then called 911 to report what she'd done. You need an ambulance? No, I need a police officer. You have sent an ambulance. Noah, John, Paul, Luke, and baby Mary. Seven years to just six months old. Her husband Rusty was working at the time. He returned to a scene of sheer terror. Cops were crying. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a lot of emotion there. After authorities apprehended Andrea Yates, she told psychiatrist Dr. Philip Resnick that her children would not grow up to be righteous. She believed that taking this action had saved them and that only her own punishment would defeat perceived evil. They would have continued stumbling. And where are they end up? In hell. In hell. Now, you concluded that they were not righteous, and you're a religious person, and explain to me what you meant by not being righteous. Well, they didn't do things God, they didn't do things God likes. Andrea Yates immediately admitted her actions and even explained that she waited for her husband to leave before acting. She also said she locked the family dog in the kennel to prevent it from interfering. I just waited till after he left and started to fill the tub. What was going on before that? That's all I thought about. Was? Drowning now. There was a three-week trial where attorneys tried to mount an insanity defense to save her from execution, but it required her to prove that she could differentiate right from wrong, and unfortunately for her, she failed. She was sentenced to life in prison and later ended the trial where she was declared not guilty by reason of insanity, so instead she was sent to a mental health facility. So if you're still here, do not hesitate to like, comment, share, subscribe and turn on post notifications. By doing that, you support Trilus and help to push the videos to other persons like you around the world. Your support is very much appreciated. See you in the next one.